Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy. Thank you for tuning in today. And today I have the 2008 Acura TL in the bay. Some of you might remember last November, November 2021, I was driving back from Indianapolis and the thing just quit on me. It just stopped, it wouldn't restart. It would turn over, but it just would not start. So in today's episode, I'm going to explore why that happened and hopefully fix it before the end of the episode. Let's find out what's going on with the TL. 2008 Acura TL 3.2 liter J series V6. These things are awesome engines. They really don't have a whole lot of problems in my experience. I'm gonna start simple with this. I sort of had suspicions about the timing belt when I replaced it when I first got this car. So the first thing I'm gonna check is there's a little window right here that you might see on the side of the timing cover and I can turn the engine over and see if that's turning. If it is turning, then I know that the timing belt's turning and the camshafts are turning. If it's not turning, well, then I know I got an issue there and I got to take apart the timing belt stuff. Here's how things look with a little light on them. You can more clearly see the cam gear there through the plastic cover. Because I turned it over quite a bit, I ran the battery down. So I'm going to use my jump box uh, for this test to make sure that it turns over fast enough. These TLs have a feature to where you don't have to hold the key in the crank position. You just need to turn it to the crank position once and it will continue to crank until the engine starts. This is going to be super convenient for the test that we're performing now. Yeah, that's not moving. That's not good. Well, we know what we've got to do next. I'm going to need to remove the timing covers and everything here to find out, well, what broke that led us to the situation where these cam gears are not spinning. Engine won't run otherwise. Since I've covered this in detail already, I'm not going to cover it in detail now. I'll get everything apart. We'll see what we're dealing with. We'll go from there. Covers are off and I found some carnage. Yeah, look at that. Now all those parts are new. Like <laughs> they have maybe a thousand miles, well, maybe 2000. Let's dig this stuff out of here and see if we can find the root cause. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Folded back over on itself. The idlers work fine. It's like a mouse or something. <laughs> Cut up in there. <sighs> So far, no clue as to exactly why this happened. I removed the rotating bits and the water pump is draining now. I'm about to remove that. None of this stuff gives any indication of a problem. This is the tensioner. It seems to hold tension. So I have no explanation up to this point as to why that occurred. None at all. Uh, I did this drive belt and look at that. It's got chunks out of it. So I thought I'd replace that, but maybe I didn't. Uh, it appears that I do have to replace it, but the inside of the timing cover certainly shows some melted, not so goodness, but there's one thing that really, really concerns me. So one thing that lives in this area, this is the crank sensor and it's held on by a couple of brackets uh, and a few 10 millimeters, but check this out. So this is a stud and that is part of the boss that that stud attaches to. So it broke the stud that holds part of this very important crank sensor to the block. I know some will say, Eric, that engine's junk. You broke the timing belt, the valves are bent, everything's just broken, it's, you just gotta throw it away. Well, that may be the case, but 
I don't think so. In fact, this is my philosophy anytime I find a broken timing belt, most times, especially on something like this. I'm gonna put a new timing belt and water pump on this and give this a try to see if the engine runs. If it runs rough, I know I've got more work to do. If it doesn't, then I got away with something. No matter what, I've got a brand new timing belt and water pump that I can transfer over to a replacement engine, which would likely be salvage anyway, or I'd already done the timing belt and water pump because obviously I needed to do it, once I've removed the cylinder heads and repaired whatever damage is in there, I can reinstall them with the new timing belt and water pump. Point is, no matter what, this is going to get a new timing belt and water pump. Why not try it, see if it works before I commit to doing more work? I just took the water pump off and nothing. This thing also seems 100% normal. I have no explanation for why this happened. It has an automatic belt tensioner, so it's not like I could screw up the belt tension and get it here. All the parts were new, water pump, all the tensioners. So there's little to nothing that I can see that I could have done wrong, but something went wrong here somewhere to cause this. I've got a new timing belt and water pump ordered. They're gonna be here today. We'll get this back together and well, we'll see if it runs. Before I head to the parts store and pick up the parts for the repair, I wanna address this. Uh, which is that boss that broke off that holds uh, the crank sensor in place. Now I'm encouraged to find that the remainder of what's here on the block goes right onto here is where this normally goes. And you can probably see there's still some threads left and that gives me a lot of hope. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this stud and I'm going to replace it with a bolt and we'll run the bolt all the way down into the engine block. This will help locate the crank sensor, but hopefully it will also hold it secure. You've probably already seen the coolant that's still down in there, so I'm just gonna hit it with some compressed air and clean all of this off because I don't want any coolant or contaminants or anything on this. I'm gonna follow it up with some degreaser and then more compressed air. Next, I'll remove the stud from what's left here. I'm grateful that there's like a flat spot on this. It'll help hold it. This is a stud removal socket. I'll link it for you. There's the old stud. That's going away. All we really want to concern ourselves with is this, which is what is left. Again, I'm going to clean with solvent and compressed air this surface so that when I install it, uh, it's a nice clean surface, not contaminated. I found a new bolt that I hope is going to work for this. This is the length of the old stud, which is roughly the length of this fastener. And in fact, you might even see that it might extend a little bit further. I'm kind of hoping for this so that this might thread into that little piece that's uh, still inside the block uh, to give me a nice secure fit. For good measure, I'm gonna run a tap down through this uh, to make sure that the threads are all good. Also gonna do the bolt, so it's hardly requiring any effort. I'm just, like I said, looking to clean the threads up so that these go together nice. That's exactly what I wanted. And the main reason for this is because I'm gonna use this bolt to locate it, and there's not a whole lot of threads left in that block. But also, I did say that I wanted to clean this up, remove any contaminants first. I'm gonna use JB Weld for this. Little tip, I just went to the craft section of Walmart picked up these little wooden sticks that I'm going to use as mixers. I often find myself like looking around for screws or something to mix with whenever I have a two-part epoxy like this. And this is not an ad, by the way. I just picked this stuff up. In fact, I picked all this stuff up in the same place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the JB Weld around the outside edge. I'm going to try to avoid getting it in where the bolt is because I'm going to have to get the bolt out and remove it. I don't want to lock the bolt in with the rest of this but I need the bolt there to hold things in place. One last blast with compressed air. Make sure nothing's got in there. And I don't know if you can see that, but as I mentioned, I only went around the outside. There's a little flat spot that's gonna help me locate it because you can sort of see it right there. Let's let that guy set up and we'll come back in a few. Back from the parts store and I have a few updates. I got a Gates timing belt and water pump kit, not advertising here. This is just what was available to me and I wanted to try and get this done today. But uh, I forgot that I didn't get the quick JB Weld. I got the other kind of JB Weld 
and that means I'm likely going to have to wait until tomorrow uh, before I'm actually able to go in and do anything with that. So I'm going to let this thing sit overnight, let that JB Weld cure up. In the meantime, what I've done, you probably see that I've already installed the water pump. That went right on. Now I had to use some kind of uh, gasket adhesive in order to get the gasket to stay put while I installed it, but it went right in, no fitment issues at all. So happy about that part of the timing belt job so far. I've also gone in and put the cams and the crank all back in time. And FYI, you won't be able to move the cams into time if you put the crank in first. So leave the crank like, you know, 25, 30 degrees off of center so that the cam can rotate. If the pistons are all the way up at the top, this is the danger here, they could come in contact with a piston, you won't be able to rotate the engine. For you, it's only gonna be a couple of seconds, but for me, well, I'm gonna go home, get myself some food, come back. Tomorrow morning, we'll come back and see, well, what happens? Did I get lucky or not? This is sat overnight and it seems to be secure. This bracket sits in here like this. So it goes onto that upper stud just fine. But I want to make sure that when it's on here, you can see how it's not quite lining up with this hole. Basically, when I attach this, I don't want this to break again. So I've got to mess with this a little bit. Other than that, it's just a question of reinstalling the timing belt. And here's a note on that installation. That's the first time I've seen this. There's a shim that goes over this front idler pulley that they supplied me with. And this is to help prevent noise. Now, I did hear a little bit of noise coming from the drive belt area, but that could have just as easily been this bad belt. And it's also the reason why I'm replacing this uh, serpentine belt tensioner. Anyway, I'm gonna install this shim underneath this front uh, idler pulley Put the timing belt and everything back on and we'll check back in when i go to start it up the plan did not work so i went through and i just drilled this out so that i could run a bolt through it and use this as a spacer there's still some threads in a block that this can catch into but i need to make sure that the spacing and placement is correct so this will help me do that also with a little bit of bending and <laughs> a little bit of grinding on the back of this I have this so that there's enough clearance to where this metal is not going to come in contact with this as it rotates. New timing belt installed, new serpentine belt and tensioner also installed, and we're ready to start it up. I'm going to measure success by the fact that this thing can start up, run, and move on its own. I'm going to be moving my shop soon, and it's really only about a half a mile away, so all this has to do is make it a half a mile. Now that I have the pilot up and running, this car isn't as important to me, and well, I'll decide its fate later on. Anyway, let's uh, start this up, see what happens. I'll bleed the coolant out. I did reuse the old coolant, but I poured it through a paint strainer. I've done that in the past, and I've found it to be very effective if you uh, want to reuse coolant like what I'm doing here. And remember, this is only a $200 car, so we can experiment. Well, I should have charged the battery last night, but this is why I got that new jump box. Here it goes. I didn't mean to hit the horn, sorry. Here it goes. Well, it's not cranking like it used to. And if I'm gonna throw my guess into the ring, I'm gonna say it's probably that crank sensor. It is, as I suspected, the crankshaft position sensor malfunction. There's also a camshaft uh, sensor malfunction, which I'm not really sure why that one's up. Maybe there's a discrepancy between the two because these two tell on each other if one of them is bad. I'm going to get a crankshaft position sensor and then we'll see what happens. Welcome back viewers. I have removed the timing covers. I had to remove all of the timing covers because the tops are locked into the bottom, but I didn't have to remove anything with the timing belt because the sensor is separate. And by the way, straining out coolant, good idea. Okay, I have the new crank sensor here. And I just wanted to give you a little bit of a note. You might see this little tab that sticks up there. Well, it's broken off of the old one and it was still in the block. Let me show you how I got it out. Now that came out of this little area right here. And what I did is I just took a screw and screwed it in and just pulled it out. So I used this as sort of a makeshift puller just to get that out of there. I tried picking it out, it wouldn't come out, but this 
came right out. So I hope that helps you if you have a similar situation. Here's the part number for the sensor I'm installing. Yes, it is an aftermarket one, but the original equipment ones are stupid expensive. I'm gonna install the new sensor now, put everything back together, and I'll check back in when we're ready to start it up. Do you think it'll run? Now I did charge the battery overnight, so it should be good. It acted like it wanted to, and then it stopped. And it's still not, it's not reading an RPM. If it was reading an RPM, I could assume that the crank sensor was working. Obviously, it's not getting a signal. The only thing I can conclude is that the wiring, which was also damaged when the timing belt broke, is damaged enough to where it's not sending a proper signal to the computer. So until that happens, eh. Also, I believe the air gap on that sensor is critical. That metal piece that went around the outside, that was also bent. Maybe it's pushing things just far enough out of alignment to where it's not working properly. So I'm gonna scour salvage yards, eBay, things like that, see if I can find that assembly that I can replace. Replace that and then we'll move forward. <laughs> yeah, okay. I know what's going on now, but that engine is okay. Eric, what'd you do? Well, I went and I messed around. I, I could just get through where the timing cover was worn through from where the belt broke to the bottom of the plug on that crank sensor. And that thing is just not staying connected. So I'm gonna take this apart again and do what I can to try to make sure that that stays connected. And once I do, this will maintain an RPM signal. You heard it run, it's not hurt. Ha ha! All right, I know you're gonna hate this, but I'm gonna remind you this is my car. I've taken two self-tapping screws and run them in underneath this. And believe me when I say that these are not loose, they're not going anywhere, but what they're doing is they're forcing the connector up into the sensor. That engine is screwed. <laughs> Sorry, dad jokes. Anyway, here it is. I didn't do anything but put the belt on it, I swear, and that crank sensor. And here we are. And I'm kind of wondering if I would have done my little screw trick with the old crank sensor if that would have worked. So don't assume just because the timing belt breaks that it's game over. You could be okay. Couple of takeaways from this video. First, if you have a no start condition, do not forget to check engine mechanical operation. Yes, it was the first thing I checked here because honestly it was my number one suspect, but don't forget about that. I have all kinds of people me messaging me, sending me emails saying I replaced every sensor on the vehicle, it still doesn't start, and they never bothered to check to see if the engine worked mechanically first. A simple compression test or check to see if the engine's spinning like I did here. That could save you a lot of time, effort, and trouble, and expense of buying parts that aren't necessarily gonna fix anything. Next thing to take away, counterfeit parts. And that's what I believe caused this whole thing. This timing belt water pump wasn't on there that long, and you might even see that there's a little bit of goo coming out of that weep hole. This was not that old, and I was always concerned about it from the beginning because I've never seen a Honda water pump come wrapped in plastic like this one did. I'm glad I replaced everything and that Gates kit seems to do the trick, uh, but at some point I do plan to go back in and replace that little piece of harness uh, before I really start driving this again. For now, I just wanna get it up the street to the new shop when the time comes so I don't have to tow it. And as far as when that's gonna happen, I still don't know when I'm moving yet. I'll link a video in the description I did recently about that. Lastly, if you break a timing belt, even on a J-Series interference engine, throw a belt on it and see what happens. That's what I say. You could get lucky, or you'll have that timing belt and water pump in case you need it. So even if the engine is damaged and you decide to repair it, you're still gonna have to replace the belt anyway. Even if you decide to replace the engine, which most likely is gonna come from a salvage yard, you'll probably wanna put a new timing belt and water pump on it. In which case you can take the timing belt water pump that you just put onto your broken engine, move it over to your new engine and you're good to go. My point is no matter what, you're gonna have to deal with the timing belt and water pump. Why not take a chance? You could get lucky. Anyway, parts, tools, additional info, link down in the description. Also a link to ericthecarguy.com, which is where I ask you to go if you have automotive questions. Other than that, thank you so much for watching today. Remember, I post videos on Fridays, so come back and see me then. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit notifications so you know when I post new videos. 
Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Thank you so much again for watching. I'll see you next time.